Hello, welcome to my little trip down road testing memory lane. Today all the questions are going to be about corners. Um, but before we dive into that, I just wanted to say how sad I was to hear about the passing of Anthony Gobert, as I'm sure you all are as well. I mean, wow, what a talent on a motorcycle. You remember him um, when he burst onto the scene at Phillip Island um, in the early 90s on his Kawasaki ZX-7R just rode the wheels off that thing, just an amazing talent. Um, and it's just a shame that that talent wasn't really realized throughout his career. He parted as hard as he rode, hence the ghost show. But um, wow, what a rider and um, how sad it is for him um, to finish his life up the way it did. So thoughts and condolences go out to the Gobert family. Um, I've been on my travels. I've been in Portugal, riding the new Honda Africa Twin. Um, that review is going to be out online soon on MCN's website, um, in MCN newspaper and on video very soon. So check that out if you want to know about the Africa Twin. One thing I would say is the Africa Twin is one of probably the best loved adventure bikes out there, you know, for people that actually own them and from people who look from afar. Um, you know, it looks great. And um, whenever MCN does a comparison test video with adventure bikes and the Africa Twin's not in it, then um, we hear about it from the comments. <laughs> Even though the Africa Twin hasn't actually got that much power, it's got 101 bhp. So you can't really put it in with the, the big boys, you know, the KTMs and the Triumphs and the BMWs. Um, it would be a little bit um, outclassed. It's more sort of in the middleweight territory, but still a superb bike a very popular bike and you can read all about those changes and um, if they make the bike better in mcn soon so cracking on to these here questions let's start with uh moto bob or not moto bob moto bobo jones thanks for the question um thanks so much for all the amazing content i've learned so much no problem i currently ride a 2021 to ono v4 base model Good choice. I find when I'm in the canyons, so I guess you're in California, I rarely brake into corners and just use engine braking when reducing speed into corners and then back on the throttle when the bike starts going upright again. Is this just lazy riding? I find the engine braking is just so strong on the V4 and I'm never really gunning it, but wanted to get your thoughts. Thanks again. Well, good question. Um, no, you're not being lazy. Um, I mean, I, I rode those canyon roads, if they are the Californian can, uh, canyon roads near LA, rode those at the Royal Enfield Shotgun 650 launch last month, and they are fantastic. And I would imagine that on a 2.0 V4, which is one of my favorite bikes, that must be absolutely heavenly. And also that 2.0 has got such a lovely front end, you know, whether it's an Olin's front end or not, it's just so well balanced. And, you know, rolling into corners is just sublime on that bike. Um, and I think if you're sort of riding at a, a nice flowing pace, there's no need to, to brake. If you're just using the throttle gently, you can just roll through the corners. Obviously, every now and then a corner will be tighter than you think it's going to be and you need to brake. Um, so that's fine. You're not being lazy. But um, if you're going to go a little bit faster, then obviously you need to brake. But for more reasons than just to stop for the corner. You know, we'll talk about this a little bit later, throttle and brakes. But... Um, you know, you, you kind of want the bike under load all the time. All the time it's under load on the throttle, the back tyres digging in, and all the time you've got it under load on the brakes and the front tyres digging in. So you're going you're gonna to help the bike feel more plugged into the ground if you're using get, um, throttle and brakes all the time, especially the back brake, which will also come into uh, later on as well. Um, it will also let you judge your corner entry speed more accurately. If you're just rolling off into corners, you never quite know what the radius of the corner is, so you're never going to get it absolutely bang on. So using the brakes is going to help you nibble into that corner a little bit more accurately. And of course, using the brakes, and getting the bike on its nose is going to reduce the trail of the steering and help the bike steer faster as well. So it's kind of win-win-win if you can give it a little bit of brake into the corner, if you're going at a pace. But to be honest, if you're just kind of cruising through, enjoying the scenery, enjoying that V4 yow um, from the exhaust of that Tuono. Yeah, you're not being lazy, you're just enjoying yourself. So uh, carry on, I'd say. Um, but great questions. I I'm very jealous. 
Um, next one is from Robbie S. Newsy, always a pleasure listening to you to talk bikes. Thank you very much. Uh, I want your opinion on the clutch operation for road use. Generally, would you dump the clutch on upshifts, downshifts, and what about clutch control in corners? Would you ever corner with the clutch pulled in to allow for less engine braking, etc.? Well, thanks for the question. That's a good question, actually. Um, I mean, let's kind of ignore quick shifters and auto blippers and engine braking control and slipper clutches for a minute. We're just sort of talking about the basics of, of gears and clutch. I, I would say, you, as far as dumping the clutch, which would basically mean going from full in just full out. I don't think that's something you should ever do because that will always upset the bike. You know, it's always a thing with a motorcycle with any of the controls that everything is done really, really smoothly. You know, you're kind of walking on eggshells with all of it. Even if you're using brakes hard and throttle hard, it's still progressive and progressive and progressive with the clutch. So with the clutch on the upshifts, if you're kind of just, you know, going at a steady speed, then you'll need to pull the clutch all the way in and then let it out between the gears nice and gently just to keep the bike smooth if you go faster pinging through the gears a little bit faster you can use clutchless shifts so that's basically where you don't have to touch the clutch you go through the gears and when you come off the throttle with the loads taken off the gearbox momentarily and it lets the gear slide in so you can burr, 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 without the clutch and also an auto blipper works in exactly the same way that kills the um, power momentarily releases the load on the gearbox and lets you get that gear in so on the way up definitely not dumping the clutch on the way down again i'm putting the clutch in between each downshift on the road nice and smoothly just letting it out smoothly to keep the bike kind of gliding along i'm never going down multiple gears and then just dropping the clutch um, but again an auto blipper and works the opposite to a quick shifter that blips the engine takes the load off the gearbox and lets you go down through the gears if you didn't want to use the clutch but that's not really to be advised on the road there's no real need to do it on the road um, so if, if you haven't got a blipper and um, an upshifter then you know it's all about using a clutch carefully um, would I have a corner with the clutch pulled in to allow less engine braking definitely not you know once you've once you've chosen your gear to go into the corner then leave leave the clutch well alone the only time that i may slip the clutch a little bit into a corner is if you go at very low speed you know you're town riding you're going through a mini roundabout something like that and you just need to pull the clutch in a little bit to stop the the engine from laboring and just to keep the bike nice and smooth but never never in a proper corner because if you've got the clutch pulled in a little bit through the corner when you let it out suddenly you've got the engine braking the engine comes into action and you'll make the bike you'll make the bike do horrible things and it's going to be unstable you know and you know when you're lent over you want all the grip you you can get so it's all about being smooth um so yeah treat the clutch with care i would say um but that is a, a really good question thank you very much next it's from uh, rick phillips 2900 um great as always newsy um keep up the top work thank you very much can i ask just another question um of course you can uh what are your thoughts on the use of the rear brake on the street not just downhill sections but for settling the bike in normal turns do you think it is helpful or is it more of a track based thing well interesting you should say that i mean this is the the great uh, back brake debate isn't it um, there was a time where it was kind of the fashion, maybe 80s and 90s and early noughties, where the kind of people would say that you never need to use the back brake, even on the track, um, because the theory is you've got these two big brakes on the front of your bike. You've got big calipers, big discs, tiny one on the back. So all your braking power is coming from the front. And that is true. All your braking power is coming from the front. But what the back brake does is is give you stability everywhere. Um, pulling the back brake on pulls the back pulls the back of the bike down into the tarmac, and it kind of sucks sucks the whole bike into the tarmac, giving giving you more grip, giving you more stability, more confidence. I think the back brake's hugely underrated, and I use it all the time. And I would I just could not live without it. I've probably been using it really a lot for the last. 10-15 years properly um, 
and I don't think I could ride just using the front brake anymore. So, you know, for road riding, for general road riding, I'm probably using 80% front, 20% rear all the time. For the wet, probably 70-30 or even 60-40. For two up riding, probably 50-50. It's all about keeping the bike flat. So, for example, you know, whether you're going into a track corner or a road corner, I'm giving it a little bit of back brake first just to pull the back of the bike down before I apply my brakes so you can keep the bike nice and stable. You haven't got so much pressure on your arms and your wrists with the, the weight transfer of the bike, so it's easier to ride the bike in that way. Um, gives you more grip, more stability. And then if you're dragging the back brake into the corner, like trail braking the back brake into the corner, it's gonna help the bike turn. Once you're in the corner, if you think you're running a little bit wide, if you've gone a little bit too fast, a little dab of back brake just helps pull it round. And on the track with a super bike, if you drag the back brake coming out of the corner, you're gonna stop it wheeling. And although bikes have got wings and anti-wheelie electronics, you know, a little bit of back brake is probably better in a lot of ways because with electronics, it's cutting power on the way out of the corner and that's not what you want. So if you can stop the bike wheeling in the first place, you get full power. Um, so I just think it's win, 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 win. Um, so it's something I think you should definitely learn to do if you're not doing it already in all scenarios. You know, some bikes really respond well to back brakes as well. If you've got a long, low, heavy bike, like a maxi scooter or a cruiser or something like that, the back brake's much more effective, you know, because most of the weight's at the back of that bike and you're using the back tire to help you, you stop. Um, and it takes a little bit of finessing because obviously your, your foot inside a great big boot isn't as um, tactile as, as your fingers in a, in a glove, but it's harder to lock the rear than you think actually. You know, the rear brakes are only small, they haven't got that much power. You can put a relative amount of force into it before it locks. And if you've got a bike with ABS, it doesn't matter if it locks, you just feel a through your through your foot where the ABS is kicked in and you know not to go quite as hard next time. So. I just think the back brake is a magic device. It makes the bike feel like it's got three wheels. It's just incredible. So um, I would definitely use the back brake as much as you can. It is a revelation. Um, that's a brilliant question. Thank you very much. Uh, this one's from Mr. 450 Pro. Um, thanks for the question. I love these videos. I'm itching to try a track day. But like the question in this vid, referring to another one, I'm afraid to lose traction and crash the bike since I don't know the limits and how the limits feel. Well, that's a good question. And, and I really think that's <clears throat> anyone who ever rides a motorcycle feels exactly the same from, from you to me, to Rossi, to Marquez or whatever. No one wants to lose traction and crash. You know, it's, it's, it's a big balancing act, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> what I would say is if you're gonna do a track your, your first thoughts really is to really get the, the fundamentals nailed down before you worry about trying to push the tires. So, you know, the fundamentals of how to sit on the bike, where to brake, where to let go of the brakes, what kind of corner speed you need to carry, what kind of line you need to use, when you need to pick the bike up, when you need to stay hanging off or getting back on the bike, all of these things, um, you need to kind of get locked in before you're absolutely pushing hard on the on the brakes on the front tire pushing hard on the throttle on the way out because the trick of going fast around a racetrack which will sort of come on to in another question is to do as much of your work as much as the kind of put the tire in as much danger in a straight line you don't really want to be forcing the tires when you've got a lot of lean you know, that's when you're going to lose the front, that's when you're going to lose the rear. So everything you're doing on a bike around the track is to, is to get the bike in a position coming out of a corner where it's kind of upright and pointing the right way. And under braking, it's, it's kind of braking in a straight line before you let go of the brakes and tip in. If you're hanging on to the brakes really hard, taking a real wide line into a corner, and you've got a lot of lean for a long time, there's only a matter of time before that front tire is going to fold. If, if you've got a big U line and you're, you're on the throttle lent over for too long, then that's where you're going to have grip problems. Um, 
So yeah, get the fundamentals. I'll talk a little bit more about the grip in another question coming up. Um, but I would get tuition if you can. If you go to a track day, I'm not sure what country you're in, but um, they offer um, instructors at most track days. That's really, really useful. You can go to places like the Whittam School, California Superbike School. Uh, Steve Brogan does one-to-one -one coaching. Spending money on um, tuition is better than throwing anything, any performance part at your bike. You know, once you've got that nailed in, then you can start to nibble away at, um, at grip and feel. Um, you know, you could go pretty much at the front end of a fast group on a track day without ever sliding the tyres or spinning the tyres or anything. If you've got the right technique, you can just be as smooth as. So that's more important than, you know, getting it loose. Um, but what you do, I'll come on to in a later question. So don't be, um, don't be afraid about traction. You know, do your track day, but get some tuition as, as fast as you can, as quick as you can, just to point you in the right direction. But great question. So next one is, um, I'm easy. Great video as always. Uh, question. Thank you. Race to 600 on my racing life. Uh, newcomer up until Super Series. Uh, sold and invested in a thousand. Have you got any tips for getting ahead of the game and riding a thousand well? Uh, thanks as always, Scotty. Thanks, Scotty. Not sure what country you're in. Super Series. I don't think it's a UK one, is it? Um, okay, so this links on to the last question, really. Um, the 600 and 1000 styles around the track are very different. Um, with a 600, they're relatively low powered, although 130, 140 horsepower is still a lot. And a 600 could probably lap as fast as a 1000 at most tracks, more or less. But they kind of get their lap time in a very different way because the 600s haven't got as much power. It's all about maintaining corner speed, taking quite flowing lines, and just keeping the keeping the bike on the boil and never letting the the revs drop because as soon as the revs drop on a 600 then you then you're done for it can't it can't get going again um you can ride a thousand exactly the same as a 600 if you wanted to you can carry lots of big corner speed um probably get around the track okay but what makes a thousand great its superpower is the fact it's got a lot of power you know maybe 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 horsepower more than a, a 600. So you need to be able to use those superpowers. So if you're riding a thousand like a 600 and you're spending a long time in the corner trying to keep the momentum going, it's gonna be a long time before you can get the bike stood up and use all of that power. And if you ride like a 600 on a thousand, you might not be any faster than a 600. In fact, you might be slower because it's harder to stop a thousand because they arrive at corners so much faster. They're harder to turn because they've got bigger engines with more inertia and bigger wheels. They're harder to keep in a corner. They're more unstable. You know, they're, they're more uh, finicky when you get on the throttle because they want to lose grip. So the way to ride a thousand is to do all of your work in a straight line. So on the way into corners and the hard braking, start to point the bike in towards the corner. And then when you're almost at the corner, let go of the brakes and then flop it into the corner and go through the corner quite slowly. So riding a thousand is pretty much a patience game. You've got to go, you've got to feel like you're going too slow and get the bike turned as much as you can with the throttle off. And then when you can see down the track, lift the bike up and then you can go full throttle. Um, you know, that, that's, the, that's the main difference uh, between riding a thousand and a 600. You've got to take more V-shaped lines so you're going into the corners, you're stopping, you're coming out under full throttle. We're actually not really going to be as fast as a 600. You might do if you've got really, really grippy tyres, but most thousands wear most tyres out within a few laps. So that kind of luxury isn't there for very long. And then you've got, then you have grip problems. So yeah, all about keeping the bike as upright as you can all the time. And, and it will take a little bit of getting used to because Riding a thousand, the, the, corner, the middle of the corner bit feels too slow and it feels like you should be going faster. But um, there's another question coming up actually. Yeah, let's um, give you an example of that. Um, 
the sort of the the thousand technique we've done a few tests at MCN with Grand Prix riders we had Cal Crutchlow and Sylvain Gintoli we had um, Cal Crutchlow come along at Bruntingthorpe with some readers on their bikes set up a little course and we data logged everybody and we saw that mid corner most of the readers were a lot lot faster than Cal in the middle of the corner by a long way but then because Cal's gone slow for, to turn the bike and the readers have gone through the corners as fast as they can because they think that's how you get the lap time so they've gone through the corners Cal's gone slow but then down the next straight Cal might be 20 to 30 mile an hour faster than, than those people down the straight so because he sacrificed a little bit in the middle of the corner he's faster at the end um, so not only is Cal going to lap a track faster when you string all those corners together he's doing it much safer because he's breaking in the straight lines um, without any risk he's flopping it onto its side without putting any pressure through the tires he's not on the throttle too early he's not hanging onto the brakes too much so he's safer than the readers which are going wow they through the corners um, and then he's coming out faster so it's a much uh, more efficient faster safer way to ride taking these kind of V lines, I suppose you'd call them. Um, and then the same with Gintoli. We were, uh, well, I wasn't, Bruce Dunn, he told me about this. He performance tests our bikes. He's a racer, does a lot of road testing with us. He was talking about Gintoli going um, around Gerrard's at Mallory, which is a real long fourth, fifth gear corner, really, on a, even on a super bike. Um, but he goes into the corner and Vs it he goes in in a straight line, almost goes out to no man's land on the edge of the track, stops the bike, pulls it back in again, and accelerates back down the next straight towards Edwina's. And then um, his mid corner speed is really, really slow compared to like an equivalent track day rider. But then at the end of the next straight, he's so much faster. So again, you know, uh, you kind of got to go slow to go fast on a thousand. And the same thing happens um, at the Haslam School when I was instructing. So, you know, generally road riders um, go too fast in the corners. So I could see, like, I was always in front. I'd always be looking at my customers in the mirrors and you could see them gain right on you mid-corner, almost hit you. But then going down the next straight, all of a sudden they're a dot in the mirrors where they just can't get on the throttle because they're lent over for too long. Um, so yeah, in short, go slow, <laughs> slow through the corners and go fast down the straight. Easy, eh? Anyway, thanks for the question. Uh, this one is from the Andy PR. Uh, Andy says, thanks for your question. Um, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm just trying to learn. On track, shouldn't one be on the brakes or on the throttle? Good question. Well, I think this comes from this whole philosophy of um, off throttle turning. So for example, on the road, you go around the corner, you come up to a, a corner, you brake, and then you get on the throttle through the corner, um, as you can kind of see it open up. And that's fine, you need to do that to be safe. On the track, if you do that, you run into problems. And this is what um, you see on the, on the Ron Haslam School. A rider will come to the braking zone, they brake really hard, and then they're straight on the throttle, sometimes way before the apex. So they're on the throttle, they're turning in, um, and because they're on the throttle, all the bike wants to do is sit up. It doesn't, it's not happy about leaning over. So they're fighting the bike. They've got the throttle on as the, as the bike's leaning over, as the grip's going and going. So they're, they're moving around. Quite often the accuracy is not there to hit the apex because the load is forced back because they're on the throttle. They have ground clearance problems. And then because they've gone through the corner so fast, they've got to wait a long time before they sat the bike up down the straights. So an average kind of road rider at the Haslam School would probably do like a two minute 20 lap time on the Honda Fireblaze that we used to use. Their bikes were data logged. My, my, my instructor bike wasn't, but I had mirrors on so I could see what they were doing. Um, but for them to go any faster was impossible because they always felt they're on the limit. They felt like they're on the limit of brakes, then they're getting straight on the throttle and they could feel the bike moving and they're on the limit of grip, which they were. Um, so you, you suggest this off throttle turning technique, <clears throat> which is basically what all racers do, but it's just got a name. So 
they, you basically say to them, you come off the throttle all the time you're turning. So the way to kind of achieve that on the track is once you finish braking, so the, don't brake any later, brake at the same time. Once you finish braking, don't touch the throttle again until you get to the apex. Most of these two minute 20 riders haven't got the corner entry speed to even reach the apex. So they've got to accelerate up to the apex. So eventually they get there by just letting off the brake a little bit more each lap, each lap until they've basically got the corner speed to, to run in. So they're off the throttle, the bike's turning nice and tight and um, you're not putting any stress on the tires. You've got lots of ground clearance. And because you, you're turning nice and tight, because you turn tight, you can lift the bike up sooner and you can accelerate out. Um, and suddenly their lap times drop five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, um, 25 seconds, um, just by doing off throttle turning. And off throttle turning feels safer because once you finish braking, you're not doing anything. So you haven't got this fear that, God, I'm gonna brake late, then I'm gonna get on the throttle, I might run off the track. So you brake, come off the throttle and don't do anything. Um, so in that scenario, your throttle straight to brakes with no gap and then nothing until you get to the corner. So you're not on throttle or brakes. And that's kind of a, an approach I would use on road corners that I can see through. Um, if I can't, then it's the old approach. You brake and power through and then if anything happens, you need to change direction. You can just come off the throttle and you're going slow enough to, to make an adjustment. Um, but there's this thing that um, obviously all racers do, they are on the throttle or brake. So they go throttle, brake, all the way into the corner, then they come out. But that bit where they're going into the corner, they're not on the throttle. That's the, that's the key to it. They're not braking and throttling before the apex. They're braking all the way to the apex off the throttle. So the bike's turning and then they're gradually getting back on again. So you know, for normal track day speeds, that's not really to be advised. You don't need to be hanging on to the brake so hard all the way to the apex. You know, that's, you're dancing on the edge of grip there. That's not something we'd kind of teach at the one Asdham school. You know, it's something that you've got to build into really, really gradually and, you know, racing or really, really regular track days that is going to teach you that. You can't just jump into breaking up to the apex because you won't have the feel. And you don't really need to, to go fast. You know, you can kind of just, not have any throttle or brakes going in. Um, you're kind of coasting, you know, as, as, you're, as you're off the throttle, as you're getting towards the apex, you, you're picking up a little bit of throttle to balance the bike, but that's, that's it. You're not braking and throttling through. So that's what this question is about, I think. It's like, you know, I thought you were supposed to go brakes or throttle all the way around the track. Well, yes, in an ideal scenario, but when you're getting up to speed, there is a time where you're not actually doing anything. And Simon Crafar in his Moto Voodoo series demonstrates that by uh, breaking into a corner, then taking his right hand off the bar. So he goes into the corner with nothing all the way through to show that he's not using throttle or brakes. And then once he gets to the apex, back on the bars and off he goes. And if you follow in Simon and you've got that old riding style, the road riding style, you can't keep up with him. He accelerates away off the throttle while you're on the throttle, it's bizarre. So it just takes a lot of thought, uh, track riding. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really nice kind of flow that you get with it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the whole brakes and throttle thing, but um, really, really good question. Thank you very much. And finally, just for a bit of fun, let's not talk about corners now. This is from David Elizabeth 4933. Thanks very much for your question. Regular commenters, so thank you very much. Uh, so, easy you get to make a wish for your next birthday. One bike, one track, one instructor for a day. What are your choices and why? Great question. Um, well, it was my birthday last week. So if you can fix this for me, I'd be very grateful. It'd have to be a, a thousand. So I'd probably choose an R1 because they're the, the nicest, easiest, friendliest of all the thousands to ride around the track. The, the normal four cylinders, uh, are fine but a bit angry even the S1000RR that I race um, the r ones much more flowing more forgiving um, the Aprilia V4 is too small for me the Caty is too stiff for me so uh, an R1 would be perfect um, one track 
it'd have to be between Phillip Island, Magello Spa, Nürburgring, uh, Jerez. What would I choose? Let's go to Spa. That's an amazing place. <laughs> One instructor. It's got to be Rossi, isn't it? It's got to be Rossi. Um, imagine him teaching you for a whole day. Um, and I could use one of his VR46 training oh, ones, couldn't I? Um, just to make life easier. Um, yeah, who wouldn't want to learn from, from Rossi? You know, we've been lucky enough to ride with proper Grand Prix riders on track. And the way they ride is just poetry. Again, they go through corners slowly. You know, I've been following Brooke Williams before. And when you're following him, he makes it look easy because he's patient in the corners before he buggers off down the straights. And I've even been on track at Jerez with Johnny Ray. I've been on a superbike. It might have been Carlos Checker's Ducati. He's on a Blade superbike. And through the little wiggly sections, just before the fast corners at the end of the track, I can kind of almost stay with him because he's not carrying much corner speed. But as soon as he comes out the corner, he's gone. And that's the big difference between a pro racer and normal riders like us. Um, so yeah, to, to, to see Rossi, which is that times God knows what, in action and for him to give you some of his secrets would just be amazing. So yes, please, I'll have, um, I'll have Rossi at Spa with a VR46 R1, please. <laughs> Great question. Um, but let me open that out to, to you lot. What would, you, well, what would your one bike track and instructor be for the day? That'd be interesting. Um, that's it. That's enough of my waffle for today. Thank you very much for watching and um, keep those questions and comments coming in and uh, look out for the next video coming soon.